Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our back. Um, and so you need your back, which should be cut on the fold. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yes, no, yes, 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 cut on the fold. Sorry. <laughs> yes, cut on the fold. Uh, we're taking count for the pleats. Um, and then your back yoke. So what I want you to do first and foremost um, is make sure to transfer any notches um, that you have or, or mark your notches, I should say. And most definitely I'm going to do have this top and that corresponds uh, to your piece. So I'll mark this one. Um, I'm going to make a mark here and this is for the pleat and this is the fold um, so I know to fold this one to this one and then the other side to the middle as well um, I'm going to mark the sides um, and that's to match the front to the back and I don't think I told you to mark the or you know to nip or mark your, your front pieces, but do that as well. You should always do that. Um, when you cut out your fabric, you should always mark it as well. All right, so I'm gonna do that for the front, I mean, for the back piece and uh, the yoke, and then I'll come back with all, you know, the, the front pieces off, the actual pattern pieces off, okay? So do that yourself and come back if you haven't already. Now, we have to attach, um, so we get all your markings, okay? Now we have to attach the yoke to the partial back, as I like to say, because it's not complete until you put the yoke on to make a full back piece, okay? Um, some people get this very confused, but it really, really isn't. And I'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible. So, you see that's the wrong side, because I have my little X. So, I'm gonna open it up. Oh, that really doesn't, because it shows on. <laughs> On this side too, huh? Ay, ay, ay. Um, hmm. I'll take my yellow chalk and see if I can. So white isn't very good. I mean blue, because it goes right through. So I'll try to put on that side to distinguish it. And yellow really doesn't come through too well either, but Okay, so anyway, so we're going to open it so that it's right side up. Um, that still looks like wrong side, but this is right side up because we don't see the yellow markings, okay? Um, now, we're going to take right side to right side, okay? Like with anything else, we line right side to right side. And separate this. Okay. So this is right side to right side, right? And then people always say, "Well, what do I do with this other piece? <laughs> you know, is that right side or wrong side? Which you know, what should it be?" Oh, sorry. I was wondering why that wasn't fitting. We have to do our pleats. But anyway, let me finish doing that so I can just show you. Um, so it's right side to right side, right? And all you want to do is put still right side to right side. So when you do it, it will be like this. So just think of the red, the yolks now are right side to right side. And that's all. So it's right side to right side of the garment. And then when you're going to sandwich in your yolk, it is right side of your yoke to right side of your yoke. That's it. It's always right side to right side. But let's do it for Okay, so you should have three markings there. That's your center mark. Uh, you're going to bring this mark to your center. You're going to bring that mark to your center pin in place and then you're going to base at about three eighths of an inch across to secure okay so again you're going to bring that first one over to the middle then the third one over to the middle 
Okay, so it's gonna be like that. You're gonna bring that other one, can't get it, but over like that. And then you're gonna base across at about three eighths of an inch to hold your pleat in place. Do that and come back. Okay, so once you finish folding in to the center, it should look like that. And you're just gonna base across, um, base or so, doesn't really matter, um, cause you won't be able to see this. Um, at about three eighths of an inch to secure your pleat in place. Okay, go ahead and do that and come back and then do your sandwich. Okay, and come back. Okay, so after you've basted your pleat um, or, you know, just fold it down because that stitch won't be shown, you're going to sandwich your yoke like we talked about. So it's right side to right side. All right, so right first, right side, right side of yoke to right side of your back. You're going to get that in place. And then you're going to sandwich the right sides of your yokes together. Then you're going to pin and then you're going to sew at whatever your seam allowance is. Mine is a half an inch. So I'm going to um, pin my uh, three pieces together um, and I'll come back and show you what that looks like and then we'll sew um, a half an inch and then what we're going to do is trim that seam allowance down by half. Okay, so you should be at this stage where your right side to right side of back of together and then your right side to right side of your um, yokes are together. Now, because, you know, we copied this, uh, this is um, extending beyond um, the shirt, which is fine. So all we got to do, you know, is we'll just trim it. Um, it's no problem with that. So if Lois does that, don't worry about it at the very and what we do is lift both of them up and basically trim to meet in line with the with the shirt and i'll just show you um how to do that but i just wanted to show you if yours extends mine doesn't extend too much on that side but on this side it extends pretty uh where i would have to trim trim the excess off um so you know you just want to make sure to I'm matching any of your notches so you should have had a center notch which you would have matched up with that where your pleat was basically uh, the center point of your of your pleat uh, so now just go ahead and sew uh, mine is a half an inch all the way across and then you're going to trim your seam allowance by half so mine will be at a quarter of an inch um, do that come back okay so as you see I'm going to sew um, the yoke uh, to the back and cut away half. So that's the half. So it left me, what about a quarter of an inch? Okay, so what you want to do is press everything up and away from your up and away from your um, shirt here. So, I hate that this looks like this. <laughs> I wish I could. But any markings that I make are going to make this looks, look like. Um, anyway, this is... So, the right side and see the yellow marks it's the wrong side so anyway so this is what your back should be looking like so far so you want to make sure to press um, your seam allowance up and away from your shirt along with the yoke and then you're going to press the other yoke so this proper names so this is the yoke the inside one is the yoke facing, okay? Um, so, so, what I wanted 
to show you. This one is not so bad. I probably won't do anything with that one. Um, Cause it's just not so bad, but. Um, Cause that'll be hidden in the sleeve. But this one is a, is a tad bit too much off. So what I would do is from here, kind of like angle it, angle it out. You want a nice little curve. Okay, you want it to maintain, it has that slant, so you want it to continue to have that slant, okay? So, you know, you can take your uh, ruler, set it to where the slant is, um, and I wouldn't want to cut off because this is going to match your shoulder, right? <clears throat> so you want your end point to be here. So you just slant it from here to the end point. So that way your shoulder seam measurement remain intact. But that way you're getting rid of this excess that is not needed. So go ahead and cut that off. Do that with one hand here. It's not working, so I'm going to put it down so I can do it. tip I didn't take off any of the tip um, so you know if I want I can do the same thing on this side so you basically angle it have it angled to wherever that excess is and you don't want to cut off any of this because that's part of your shoulder measurement so you just angle it so it's like that and so this will be the excess that you'll be cutting off and I'll just go ahead and cut that off too and Put this down so I can do that real fast. That's why I don't want you to stress out stress out about if anything is excess because you're just easy to you know have stuff even up. So there you have it. So this is your back pattern, and we have your front front pattern um, and that will be next on the agenda so go ahead and do your front bands okay make sure to do your front bands and then I want you to do attach your back to your yoke um, and so those are two techniques that you need for your shirt so go ahead and get that done and then when we come back we will be moving on to attaching front to back and we'll be doing the burrito method so your shoulder seams won't be sh uh, shown at all um, it'll be clean on the outside and it'll be clean on the inside it'll be no raw edges shown at all okay so then we'll come back and do that with the burrito method okay have a good weekend everybody Okay, so now we're going to be attaching the front um, pieces to the back pieces to the back that has the yoke. Um, and so we're going to be attaching at the shoulder. And so remember, um, we're going to be doing the burrito method. Um, so we have a clean finish with our shoulder, shoulder seams. Okay. So the way you do the burrito method and the easier way, because some people think it's, you know, oh, I can't remember. Easiest way to remember to do the burrito method is just to treat it as you're just doing uh, like your regular stitching pattern when you're stitching your, your front to back at the shoulder seams. So what do you do? You only have one front 
one back, right? So now we have um, two yokes. So it's actually three pieces. So what you're going to do, you want right side to right side. So we have right side of the front to right side of the back. Okay. Um, and so you're just going to do the facing. Okay. Because that is the yoke facing. You're just going to put that down and out the way. So you're only working on two pieces. Okay. So just move that out the way, tuck that under, tuck that under. So now you're only working on two pieces like you would traditionally have in any kind of garment sewing when you're sewing at the shoulders. You will be attaching the front to the back, right? So that's what we have. Front, um, right side to right side, front of the pattern to the back, um, to the back pattern, right sides facing. So you only have two, okay? So you just treat it normally at this point. You're going to stitch across your shoulder seams, okay? Now, because technically we're going to have um, three pieces, right? Um, you can, uh, mine is a half an inch. You can sew just within um, in the seam allowance. So you can see my marking here is for a half an inch. You can sew just within it, like right here, um, like, three eighths of an inch or something, but just within that line. So when we do, uh, so in the, the yoke, the, um, the facing, I'm sorry, the yoke facing was so on that, um, half an inch and your previous stitch line won't show. So you can't do that. Or you can just sew, you know, right along it. Either one works, but what I want to want you to take away with this is, you're just working with two pieces, just like you normally would with any other garment. You're attaching front to back, uh, right sides facing. And you're just going to put the yoke facing, um, push it out the way, just, you know, so it, it won't get attached. Okay, so go ahead and sew at whatever seam allowance you deem fit here at your regular seam allowance or just within. Okay, go ahead and do that and come back. Uh, at the shoulder and remember it's just your traditional front and back not the third piece not the uh, yoke facing and now I'm just going to cut down some of this bulk because we are going to have to add a third layer to the shoulder so cutting it down to about quarter Now, you're going to do the burrito method. So, your um, yoke facing should still be uh, down, right? So, up top, it should just be your two pieces that you sew together, and your facing should be down. Now, your garment itself, think of that as the meat. <laughs> um, okay, so we're just going to roll the meat into the burrito okay just gonna roll 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 this is the filling or whatever not be meat veggies you know whatever filling uh good goodness you have in your burrito that's what this filling is just gonna keep rolling keep rolling 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 until you see the bottom of your burrito okay um so this is the stuffing the filling whatever it is that you put in your burrito okay um, and then you're going to take your yolk facing and put it to the shoulder okay you want to make sure that your burrito filling is out the way and all you're going to do now is sew the shoulders again here at your whatever your uh, seam allowance is so mine is a half an inch Mine is a half an inch. The only thing you want to make sure is that you do not sew your stuffing. Okay? Make sure that your stuffing is out the way. Okay? When you sew. 
You can pin this down if you like, just to keep it nice and secure. But again, you'll be sewing the stuffing. I'm sorry, sewing at the, the shoulders, not the stuffing. Don't sew the stuffing. So again, I'll do it again so you can see. So just make sure that your uh, yoke facing is already away. It should already be away because you, you sewed your shoulder with just the two layers like you would traditionally do. And this is your main garment. And what you're going to do is just start rolling your stuffing up, up, up until you see your burrito layer. The burrito shell, if you want to say that, burrito shell. And you're going to put, bring your shoulders to shoulder, match your shoulder to shoulder, okay? Match your shoulder to shoulder, like that. I'm trying to do it with one hand, kind of hard. Shoulder to shoulder on both sides, okay? And then you're just going to sew, sew across your shoulder seam again. That's all you're going to do, making sure not to catch your burrito. So what I'm going to do, the burrito stuffing. So I'm going to do this tightly. <laughs> so I'm going to use both my hands. Uh, pin at the shoulder seam so you can see it. Um, and then take it to my sewing machine and sew across both shoulder seams again um, at whatever seam allowance. Mine is a half an inch. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then... Um, I'll probably just have to trim this top half because I already trimmed that bottom. Um, so just, you know, line up and trim off any excess from the yoke facing uh, that I have. And then we'll come back from there. So, so here is my burrito. Making sure that all the stuffing is out the way when I sew uh, the shoulder seams. Um, one thing you can do is, um, you know, wait to cut down the, um, trim the excess seam allowance. You can do that. Um, it won't hurt if you decide to do it that way. Um, uh, but if not, you can just do it the way I did it. And then at the end, cut off the excess of the yoke facing, um, you know, just to match. So what I'm going to do is basically... So again, following my previous stitching as a guideline, okay? You see, following my previous stitching as a guideline. So I'm going to try to stitch right on my previous stitching. Um, and again, so I, I stitched for the my first seam, I stitched on a half an inch. Now, if you did not, you know, if you did it within that seam allowance, then this one you would just do at a half an inch. Um, all right, go ahead and sew that and come back. Okay, so you see I tried to stay on that stitch line as best as possible. Some time went off, but, you know, that's why some people sew just within uh, the seam allowance, you know, just for a little bit of forgiveness. But, okay, so now I'm just going to trim the excess of the facing, yoke facing, like I said, if you want to do this as a final step, all at one time, trim that seam, that's probably honestly best, <laughs> you can do it that way too, um, so now you want to carefully pull your meat out of your neck hole here. Okay, um, I'm going to try to do it so it does not stretch the neck. Okay, um, and I don't know if I can do this with one hand. I'll hold it up. Can you see that? Okay, so you're just going to try gently pull it out. Not to stretch the neck. Do the other side. So I got one side out. And we're going to gently do the other side. Alright, and then fold 
need your meat. I'm just trying to unfold everything. So as you can see, that is your shoulder. And this is on the outside what that looks like. And on the inside is just as clean. Okay. And so now you just give it a nice little press. everything turned out now I really don't know if it makes a difference if your side seams aren't done I never did it that way I always do it when my side seams are open like I haven't finished the side seams probably doesn't make a difference but um, just to let you know just a caveat I haven't done it where my side seams were actually closed, did the burrito method. Um, but I don't think it really should make a difference because you're folding your meat up like that. So I really don't think it'll make a difference if you do the burrito after your side seams. But anywho, um, so this is the, the right side. You can see at the shoulder, it's a nice clean finish. Keep in mind, I haven't pressed it yet, but nice clean finish. No raw edges showing, and open it up to the inside. Same thing, nice clean finish. No raw edges are showing at all. Okay, um, and this is the inside of your yolk. Side of the garment. Okay, so that is the burrito method. Hopefully that helps you out to get clean finish on both the inside and the outside of your shoulder seams. Um, you know, and um, yeah, I'm trying to say this. So much stuff you can do it there. I'm pretty sure there's other um, um, situations where you can do it, but usually when there is a three. <laughs> You know, when you have three pieces here, like our yoke constituted two, and then this one, so we can get that clean finish on the inside. Okay, any questions on that? Let me know. Um, and hopefully, you guys are making your samples right along with me. And what you know, I told you last time about me doing pictures. What I'm gonna do is actually um, do it separate again, um, so I can have actual samples in my. Um, in my thing in in my in my garment so either i'm gonna do it separately or when i finish constructing this i'm gonna actually just take it apart <laughs> so you know for one side i'll probably uh cut here um so i can have the band um and then um when we did the yoke i probably cut maybe along here so I can have the yoke um, pieces. And that's probably honestly what I would do. Um, not even making a separate one, just use the one that we made after I done made it um, and just cut it up. So if you wanna do that too, go ahead. If you wanna make a whole nother um, set so you can have a complete one in, in, intact, go ahead and do that too, obviously. Oh, we haven't did the collar yet. But once I do the collar, I probably would cut off the collar so I can have have that. Yeah. So those are probably the three. Yes, yeah, the yoke, the band, and collar. Oh, and set in sleeve. Um, we will be doing a set in sleeve here too. Um, your, when we do our pattern, it'll probably call for a flat. But, you know, I don't use that method very often and I don't see it used very often. I see the set and sleeve method used, I would say 90% of the time. 
at least 85 percent of the time 85 to 90 percent of the time i use the see the set and sleeve method so that's the one that we're going um to use and that's the one that i'm gonna use and teach and has as as my sample um the only thing is we probably you know we won't have a lot of ease which is fine it just makes sewing it um easier and then that gives us an opportunity to add to our technique binder because we'll probably crimp it um crimp it or gather it we'll probably do a combination of both we'll do a crimping and then we'll do a gathering um yeah so while i'm at it i know i only told you to cut out one sleeve go ahead and cut out another sleeve um because one sleeve we would do um cut out two more sleeves because one of these you know we're going to set in um we're going to set in but then i want to have two for our technique binders and one we're going to do a crimping and we're going to put in our technique binder and then the other one we're going to do a gather um or ease what do they call it i think it's called an ease um a ease stitch where you gather in the excess at the top and we're going to put that in our technique binder as well so two of them we put in our technique binder and then one we would put in the garment itself and again we only doing one sleeve here um so again uh, we sh you should already have one sleeve so go ahead and cut out two more for our technique binder and that's it okay everybody have a great day